Uh, namaste and um, good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of our lab, it is truly my privilege uh, to be in conversation with um, um, two artists I deeply admire and who I've had the privilege of working with, and also the opportunity to speak with another fantastic artist, Padmini Krishnamurti. Very, very warm welcome to our dear friends, um, Lalguri GTR Krishnan sir and Lalguri Vijay Lakshmi ma'am, and of course to Padmini Krishnamurti ji. Uh, this is a team that has put together uh, a fantastic dance production that we all have the opportunity to watch on 27th of October, soon after Navaratri is over. So no excuses for, you know, being busy during Navaratri. This is on um, uh, Friday, October 27th at the Nardagana Sabha. All details have been shared on Alap's page as well as the artist's um, candles. This is a really short conversation just to pick your curiosity and interest on what really sets this production apart. This production, Ur, The Divine Destiny, premiered as part of the Cleveland Tyagaraja Festival in, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in the US in April, and it is now uh, getting ready for its Indian premiere. So without much ado, uh, let me start with asking Padmini ji uh, a question really about, because this is a dance production, I'm just curious to get a dancer's perspective on what was really the, you know, the inspiration for this work. And this is a fairly rare kind of a concept in the context of the arts. Padmini could you quickly take us through the genesis, the inspiration and how this work has sort of shaped and have you sort of reworked it for its Indian premiere? Namaste ji. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to talk about this. Uh, I won't say it's a, it's a new production, but it is kind of a new thing right now. As the word says, Ur, it's a Tamil word, as we all know, the meaning is kismet, destiny, fate, how we call it, karma. So the inspiration for this Ur production is from the great character Bhishma, the Pitamaha of Mahabharata. It always used to fascinate me, you know, whenever I read about Bhishma, it, uh, the, he was an Ashtavasu and then was cursed by Sage Vashishta and then he comes to the, to this earth and then he has to go through all sorts of whatever a normal human being has to go through. And then a character Shikandi comes in, he, she comes in as a woman and then she changes her gender just to bring down this Bhishma character. So we know the Bhishma character is the, it takes the most part of Mahabharata, almost from the starting to the end of Mahabharata, we see the character Bhishma. But uh, Shikandi being the cause to bring down the character Bhishma, it used to fascinate me. So then I started looking at other stories of uh, our Purana and Itihasas. Uh, then it all made sense when we started looking at from this point of an angle, how this uh, so-called Ur or Vidhi in our simple Tamil we call, uh, it all made some sense to me. Oh, definitely will all of us will agree to it at one point you know all of us must have uh, stood at least once in our lifetime looking at the path whether we need to choose a free will or uh, you know go by the destiny what is given Absolutely. to us but uh, now I still believe even that free will is by the destiny if there is a destiny to take the free will then we have yeah you know we have an allowance to chase the choose the free will so right. then that's how the old started and uh, I was so fortunate that uh, Sundar Mama agreed to take this uh, project. So though it is an abstract uh, concept, he was ready to take this project to the US this year. And uh, I have to be really thankful for connecting me to Krishnan sir and Vijay Lakshmi ma'am. Uh, it is so difficult for, um, you know, to comprehend somebody else's thought process and bring that to life. You know, uh, it can be here. I can have enough uh, number of ideas and whatever I can think of imaginative but uh, they just gave life to the entire production with their lyrics and the music so I'm thankful to both sir and ma'am and this is how it started and uh, when we talk about the team uh, we three are the same the entire uh, the rest of the team has changed we haven't done any editing as uh, part of the dance or the music we haven't done any editing we are just doing the same thing but the dance team and the music team we have the entire new team with us uh, to work for 27th October. Uh, we're really really looking forward to that Padmini thank you so much for really giving us a very crystal clear view 
Um, I want to ask uh, Vijayalakshmi, ma'am, really a question. Some of the words Padminiji used were really, really fantastic. One is you used the word abstract. Um, and then you talked about how fascinated you were with this whole idea of this shikhandi and whatever. You know, the whole uh, notion of, um, you know, this destiny, free will. Uh, I work for a university and, and I remember attending a lecture of on philosophy on this whole idea of destiny and free will. So in some sense, this production packs in ideas on philosophy, on spirituality. Um, you know, it's really, really not as... Um, straightforward as it seems and of course yeah. the story of Shikhandi we're all aware of so um, uh, Vijay Lakshmi ma'am could you tell us a little bit about what kind of goes into the thought process when you start like you know what was the starting point for this production uh, which is so extremely you know nuanced and layered thank you Akila um, as uh, Srimati Padmini already mentioned that uh, this production has an equal amount of abstract subject and also beautiful stories to it. Uh, Srimati Padmini gave us a very strict uh, script, like uh, uh, everything was tightly packed and she had already conceptualized the story, where it should be, what should happen, what is the dialogue between Yama and Chitragupta, or uh, every single detail she already had planned. So which is where the challenge begins, you know, when somebody else brings a theme and all the ideas packed and we have to give uh, shape to it in music and lyrics. That's where the challenge starts because uh, um, it, we are working inside a frame now. Um, it's not like just composing an inspired Tilana or Varnam and you p get to pick the theme and uh, Raga. We here we have to um, bring out the music and narrate what P Padminiji has in her mind. So uh, Anna and I had a a beautiful start to it because we started off with uh, actually the instrumental music first because this production has equal importance for instrumental music and also uh, lyrics and songs so the first thing we both composed uh, was uh, the entry of Yama the theme music uh, Yama enters in a very grand way and uh, uh, the theme music you will get to hear often when Yama enters or exits so, and also we composed the uh, Pushpanjali and Anna chose the ragam for it, a beautiful Gambiravani. And uh, these were the two things that we uh, composed first, which was purely instrumental, uh, no lyrics in that. But then uh, things started flowing and, uh, you know, once you get into the flow, things do happen uh, very quickly. I was actually just going to, you know, ask you that in some sense, when you start something, um, yeah. Do you feel like things just like start moving, right? Absolutely. So it's always the first, so, you know, to kind of yeah, yeah. the cracking the first look, so to speak, right? Absolutely. It's, a, it's an experience. I, actually, it's a very humbling experience, I should say, because you don't know where you are starting and some, uh, somewhere you are, you're already going to finish the project and you know that, you know, you're, it's some inspiration guides you and you're able to do it. I also want to say hats off to the two of you because the last three weeks we've been talking so much and I, I'm totally aware of your really, really hectic schedules. So before I, you know, I want to, you know, I originally planned to ask Krishna sir another question, but I want to ask you both about how you find moments of quiet, you know, amidst the madness of a schedule to really, really get into the skin of the production, the character. And I'd like both of you to respond to this. Uh, before I ask uh, another question to Krishan sir, so please yeah. uh, feel free yeah. to go ahead. I, I think uh, music and the notes and the melody, the, the world of melody itself is a door that opens you to, you know, some quietness. And once you enter there, you find your own zone. Uh, amidst all chaos and all the travel and all the busy schedule, you definitely, your mind goes into that silent space. And you're able to get into it. I think musicians are uh, naturally trained. Their minds are, uh, our minds are trained to find that quiet space, even when we are doing other things. So I think that's also a blessing, Akila. Oh, absolutely. Yes. In this, yeah. in this extremely noisy and yes, um, you know, distracted world, that's yeah. truly a privilege. Is all yeah. I'd like to say. And thank you for the music. Thank you for the dance, Christian sir. I'm going to ask you a question, really, about you know, you have. Uh, composed so many, uh, you know, beautiful pieces of music for dance. Um, we recently ran a series in our lab called The Music of Dance, The Dance of Music. 
Um, and I cannot think of anybody more than the two of you for that particular series. You know, so I was going to ask you a little bit about in some sense, when you are creating music for dance, you are also in some sense like Padmini Ji, the choreographer, right? You're the music choreographer. Could you tell us about that process? And, um, you know, what are some of the key, uh, you know, moments of excitement, uh, I'm sure there are moments of exhaustion and, you know, frustration as well. So could you just uh, talk to us specifically in the context of this production? Yeah, thank you, Akila. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. In the beautiful platform, Ala, which is known for dance. Uh -huh. And uh, this is, uh, it has grow a lot of relevance to the present day context as the topic is. So the music has also to be that way it cannot be superfluous it cannot be inadequate the right balance has to be struck that's where the challenge lies and uh, being an instrumentalist you are always having the limitation of being an instrumentalist so you have to communicate more than what a vocalist will do so that sense in us is the driving force i should say Fantastic. And, uh, yeah. i should add to what uh, viji said that we are just a note away from the cocoon that we would like to get into when we start uh, composing for this. We have to imagine the situation and see it through the audio notes that we produce. So every note has to be meaningful. So it has been a wonderful, humbling experience to do this project and uh, just as we were touring, this also happened, the composing happened when we were on a tour to the USA. So weekends, we were focusing on the concerts. Oh, and yes. uh, during the week, it was uh, going into getting into another totally different mode. And we would just get into that zone. And uh, like uh, Virat Kohli getting into the flow of getting <laughs> hitting sixers and fours, Absolutely. When you get into the uh, this thing, it just comes. That is, uh, it is not an individual effort. You, it's a connect. That's always I felt, and we have used a lot of uh, rare uh, ragams like uh, Kange Abushni, Lavangi, and uh, Gambi Ravani. And being an instrumentalist, we have composed pieces for instruments, and everything is very meaningful. It's not just a ritualistic thing, and. Uh, it is not just the two of us working. It is always working in tandem with Srimati Padmini Krishnamurti, who has also a great ear. And she wants a specific things to be communicated. So it was all the more efficient. So where every note had to be very efficient and productive. So it has been a beautiful experience. No, um, uh, thank you so much for uh, whatever. This is only like basically picked our curiosity uh, to come and really watch this production. And I urge dancers and musicians to please come and um, be there with all of us as we really witness this fantastic production. That's the um, that's truly, I'm sure, fascinating. Just by based on what you're all speaking, it's going to be like very very exciting. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. We truly value it. Uh, please stay tuned to our page as we bring you more snippets and uh, be there on uh, Nardagana Sabha. All are welcome. It's not a ticketed event. So please do be there. Thank you very much, Padmini Ji. Thank you, Krishnan sir. And thank you, Viji ma'am. Thank, thank you, Akila. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.